Well, I guess maybe it would help to, to kind of explain my background a little more. So my father is an Afghan Orthodox Jewish rabbi, and I come from a, an Orthodox Jewish family, and I myself am modern Orthodox. I've known I was gay for a very long time. Um, and I went through yeshiva, which is Orthodox Jewish school, until ninth grade. And I, and I actually applied to transfer out of my yeshiva to Harvard Westlake, my high school, in secret. And, uh, and that's kind of when I left the yeshiva was when I really first began to accept my sexuality and learned that I needed to find a way to accept it more fully in the way I lived my life. But at Williams, I wanted to be able to embrace it more publicly. Actually, the first three weeks of Williams, I was still closeted. I didn't tell anyone I was straight, but I didn't tell anyone I was gay. And I actually asked one of my now good friends out on a date, hoping that maybe I could start my my career here as a straight person. She thought I was gay, so she didn't, she thought, so she brought some friends over and I thought, oh, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> I took her to Images for a movie. So there's this thing at Williams called Story Time. And every Sunday night at 9 p.m., some member of the community, sometimes it's faculty, staff, or administrators, but often it's students, um, tells their life story to whoever wants to listen in the second floor of Peresky. And somehow I was, chosen to, to say my story three weeks into my freshman year. I would talk about being Orthodox Jewish in a non-Jewish environment, wearing my yarmulke and what that's been like. But about two thirds of the way through my story time, I looked around and I thought, you know, there's not gonna be a better time to do this. And so I told everyone. A lot of people already had guessed it, but I guess I came out in a very uh, public way, and that really, really helped. Every time you have to out yourself, at least in my my experience, it's it's painful. It hurts. I mean, you don't want to. It's not something you. Know, it's a personal thing, and to be able to do it in that venue was was really helpful. But it hasn't been easy at Williams. It's a, it's, it's it's a very small community here, mm -hmm. but I have been able to in you know in four years really find support and mentorship with a lot of the queer community at Williams and never once have I felt like I had to choose between one piece of me and the other and I've never felt compelled to uh, closet one or the other and I owe that to Williams and so it was a huge release but it was a piece of me I'd never really accepted to the utmost because I never, no one else knew. I had to reorganize myself, I had to, I could do anything. There was nothing at Williams that I couldn't say, I felt I could, or I couldn't do, and, or I couldn't wear. Um, and the funny thing actually that happened then was Williams became my, my home once I did that. Because my other home, back in LA, I was closeted until junior year, and so, Williams was a safe place for me from that moment on, safer than anywhere else. That Sunday night at 9 p.m. In, in Baxter Hall, everyone knew.